Hello, and thanks for joining me. My name is Chris McGowan. I'm the Principal Information Security Professional Practice at ISACA. Joining me today is Cindy Baxter, who's the Director of What's at Risk. Um, today, she's going to discuss a uh, recently released ISACA journal article titled, Do Data Go to Waste? Welcome, Cindy. Thank you, Chris. So, Cindy, before we um, jump to the, the article questions themselves, if you wouldn't mind just uh, giving us a little background of, um, of your company and uh, wh what you guys do. Sure. Um, I started What's the Risk um, after really living in corporate America for many decades. Um, I was one of those people who made a number of dramatic changes during the pandemic. We moved during the pandemic, albeit only two miles, and and I resigned um, my my position um, in a large corporation to try and see if I could make it on my own. So it's been about a year. It's been a very interesting journey. And what's the risk? Is focused on um, business continuity and resiliency. Uh, I had written the um, business continuity and disaster recovery uh, audit program for ISACA back in 2021. Uh, it's an area where I had um, a lot of background in a couple of the corporations I worked in. And um, the focus is really um, over the past year has morphed into being more on the regulatory and environmental side of things. A lot of interest in my community regarding climate change, the environment, uh, and actually the article that we're going to review today is one of those interesting tours that I took, uh, not really thinking about the, um, you know, the overall initial audit impact and then it, it of course it became something that was very very intriguing in terms of how uh, a water treatment plant needs to put in controls handle environmental issues and a whole host of other things that was kind of up my alley in in terms of the business that i've started hey, thank you I, I have to admit when i uh, first read your article um I didn't know really what wh where it was going to go, and then once I really read all the statistics and everything, I was I was quite shocked on uh, on what data was actually collected and how much of it. Um, so that would lead me into my first question: Is in uh, what sorts of data does the um, Massachusetts Water Resources um, Authority manage? So, Chris, it's a really good question, and it's 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 a little bit funny. So there are some obvious data points that. Um, the MWRA, Massachusetts Resource Water Association, collects um, obviously water cleanliness, um, sediment rates, and um, you know what's being released into the ocean. Everybody would kind of expect that that's what's being collected, water volumes in the facility. Um, but the director that I was um, lucky enough to interview kept emphasizing um, financials. And I just kept glossing over that until it finally hit me in the head that when, when you have a waste or water treatment plant, they're serving a number of groups, but principally they're serving a number of communities and individual ratepayers like you and me. So when when they look at all of the controls and all of the different data, everything has to be justified to those ratepayers. So yes, they're collecting water violence. Yes, they're looking um, very carefully at a number of control points for cleanliness. Uh, they have a number of steps in the process that have to be managed tightly. Process management is critical for that reason. Um, but ultimately, there's also that um, how are you spending my money aspect of things. So, so things have to be um, tracked from not just data points that talk about water cleanliness and even given you know COVID, COVID levels, because that's detectable in water. Um, but is this worth the money that the ratepayer is being charged? Uh, so how they make sure that they collect those financials and and the um, the audit aspect of the financials, not not just the water quality um, and and other points. Um, 
know, those all become very, very important. Um, beyond those um, financials and the water quality, there's also, because it is a plant, a number of OSHA controls that have to be managed very tightly. Safety concerns are paramount. Um, walking through the plant is a, a great visual of how controls are established because there are um, labels taped to all of the equipment. There are control points, there are safety stations. Um, everything is very uh, structured, I guess is the best word to put it. So uh, it's it's got a number of data points because there are a number of different audiences. Yes, thank you. Uh, I, I have to agree with you. Uh, looking from the outside, most people would just think it's a water treatment facility. All they do is you know clean water and that's pretty much it. But obviously it's eye-opening to realize that's not exactly the case. Uh, in reference to the wastewater treatment environment, um, you stated that it's an epitome of data collection and automated control points. Is, could you uh, explain a little bit more about that? Yeah, definitely. Uh, and I think this is where it really plays up for any risk management and audit professional. The plant really has so many different audiences that um, that use information or regulate what's going on in the plant, that data points are, are literally everywhere. Um, if you think of, of, as you had said, Chris, you know, it's just a water treatment plant, but then when you think of what's behind it, and this gets into a little bit about that digital trust, this is the water we drink. I'm going to have a sip of my coffee, and I don't have filtered water. I trust that the city... I do. I trust that the city has got clean water, um, but it's not just me feeling like it's okay. Uh, there's a lot of data to support that, and that data comes from uh, the water treatment facility. It has to be not only um, prepared for some of the data points that we discussed in terms of quality, volumes running through the plant, um, different stages in terms of, of where the water is. There are also byproducts that come out that are then sold separately like fertilizer. So the sedimentation then becomes a natural uh, product that people use. Um, all these different things are used um, because there are, as I mentioned, so many different audiences. And to then have to take that data and make it ready for use by 43 different communities means you're parsing information multiple times. You're talking to different agencies who have different agendas. So the, the amount of data um, is, is huge. And when I spoke with uh, the director, um, you know, one of the things that he mentioned that was really critical was how to manage that data because there is so much of it and how to get it to the right audience. And, and he honed in on one of the areas within the plant itself, which is really useful. When you think of what, what your job might be in the plant, if you have all the data available to you, then it's not gonna be efficient. You've gotta dig around for what's important to what you have to get done in a day. And what they do, even just within the plant, is structure it so that people are really great at what they do, but it's supplemented by data that will make what they have to do, efficient, high quality, and accurate. And, and all of those things um, bring digital trust. The fact that they can take um, all these data points that every you know, different audience might want and then parse it over to that audience, make it av available to the public on a near real-time basis is very impressive. Yes, I think that was a good explanation on how digital trust and transparency and reliability is, you know, makes the data that's produced very important. What's at the heart of the IS risk and audit professions that make the data so usable? I think, uh, of course, any any um, utility, if you will, or or um, um, supplier of um, of of public services like the MWRA is. Um, is is beholden to the regulations and therein lies the the value of audits. As I mentioned, financial audits are key. They have a number of aspects that then allow the Deer Island treatment facility to 
to not just continue operations, but make the necessary upgrades. So if you imagine um, the importance of solid infrastructure, something that's sound, that's reliable, um, it really depends on, on funding that's available to keep things maintained, but also keep things upgraded. All of that has to be justified because of the degree of regulation in the industry um, so that as a rate change occurs, it's not just covering the bare minimum, but it's covering the points that are necessary uh, to keep all the other controls that an auditor or, or risk professional would wanna look at under control. Um, so, so certainly there's the financial audits that have to go on, um, the water quality audits, and it's a very automated system. So for auditors who, um, you know, do the checking and balance, use the automated tools that facilitate timeliness of reviewing the situation. And of course, it's very dynamic. Um, you know, last week we experienced 70 degree dry weather. Um, Three days ago, we had three inches of rain, and, and that adds to the volume of the plant. It all has to be monitored very closely, and you can't audit things manually. You've got to be able to dip into those systems, look at what's going on, and just as the workers on the floor, you've got to be able to segment the process so that you've got a clean scope of work to get the job done. And, and again, the way the plant operates in such a structured fashion um, makes it a, a great uh, a great audit assignment, if you will. It's 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 a very good best practice to look and see, you know, how do I make sure I've got a logical scope? How do I leverage automation so that I'm checking for exceptions, not trying to look at every single piece of data, um, and, and then not providing timely information. Yeah, I have to say, um, the more I read the article, it's just it's it's really mind blowing the amount of information that's actually you know collected and maintained. Um, if you don't mind, could you uh, talk to us about the uh, PI process book and and why it's important? Sure. So the PI process book is the is if you will the overlay application that um, that is used to take all of the data um, and then parse it out so that teams have what they need to run their specific operations. And in fact, what's meaningful now um, for the plant is that the, the process book is being upgraded um, to a new platform. So if you think of, of the degree of control that they have today, they, like all of us, have to keep up with technology. They're staying on the same platform. It's worked very well. Um, Deer Island, I think, is not just renowned here in New England, um, but has really become a case study um, in the U.S. and I believe around the world for uh, successful regulation um, of an area that really was very polluted 30 years ago. Uh, it definitely is a tale of, of um, misuse of a harbor and the subsequent cleanup. And, and all of that is possible in terms of providing an excellent monitoring platform because the PI process book uh, enables people to look at the right information at the right time and to go back to his history so that you don't lose those historical trends and you can leverage that information as well to try to solve the problems that we may face today um, in managing the water and the plant and, and the safety. Yes, I've seen the pictures of the whales off the coast of, or yeah. off the banks of the facility, and it's it's really mind blowing to think that, you know, I know growing up thinking about water treatment facilities, it's it's the water's usually not that healthy around them just because of the nature of the business they do, uh, but to see the pictures of the whales and everything is really it's, it's it's really amazing how things have changed over the years. Yeah, it's in fact it's really interesting because um, my editor Marita Jasper and I were were talking about that whale picture um, because it's one of those things that you you d not only do you not see, um, but what was very interesting we were looking at a number of different pictures to see what could be included because of climate change the whales have come in further to Boston Harbor so there were a number of sightings this year alone and there were calves 
plane in right in front of the plant, there's a brand new fishing pier um, that the Commonwealth of Massachusetts has set up. So people actually sit there and they fish directly out of the harbor. I, I eat lobster from Boston Harbor and, and people would have been scared to do that, um, you know, 10, 20 years ago. Um, so it's definitely a sign of, of success. Uh, and, and again, enabled because the tracking is very good. The tools are updated when they need to be, and it builds the necessary trust for all the different audiences. Yeah, I think that's a great to point out. And in the fact that the way that they've been doing things can be used by other organizations or other mm -hmm. companies or other whatever it may be to hopefully help improve their processes as well. Yes. Okay, to uh, sum it up, Cindy, um, how do risk management and audit professionals contribute to making data meaningful? I think the importance um, that we as a profession bring to the table uh, is, is first of all, due diligence. I think um, the whole theme of digital trust is an important one. And I think as a profession, we are the ones that help build awareness um, have the opportunity to educate in addition to the kinds of checking, um, scoping that we may do. Um, it, it's, it's really important to make sure that the data has been reviewed carefully, that there's confidence not only in what people are going to be receiving, but that the people who are running the operations feel good because they can look at not only the data that's presented to them, but they've got validation um, from the steps that an auditor, um, a risk manager provides um, to know that the work that they're doing is, is on track. Uh, and that's critical. Uh, you know, again, it's, it's something that one takes for granted and, and one takes it for granted now because of high performance, um, that the water is clean, um, that that when it goes into the ocean here, the Atlantic Ocean, um, that, that the detection methods are thorough enough to know that it's okay to eat fish, that you can swim in the harbor, that you can do a number of different things and not worry uh, that what existed, you know, way back when the Clean Air and the Clean Water Act were enacted in the, in the 70s, that it's not like that anymore. And there's always a risk, you know, political climates change, um, ability to fund operations change. Um, but ultimately, when you have an organization and you have a function that is so essential um, to what people do, and I briefly mentioned COVID, when you solve that baseline of everybody knowing that the water is clean, they can drink it, they can play in it, they can, they can fish in it, and then you go above and beyond and you add valuable data that helps track and trace down pandemics, um, you, you know you're really adding value to the community, not just performing a baseline operation. Yes, yes, I agree. Um, do you have anything else to share with our listeners? I think um, the only thing I would, the or an additional thing I would share is, I, I really, I guess, did not think about how much you can do locally in terms of seeing what's going on in the community or how different operations run. Um, the Deer Island facility has tours. They've had tours for a long time. I just never bothered. Um, and, and when I decided it might be an interesting thing to do this summer, um, I really was amazed. So I would encourage people um, to, to think about things that might be interesting. There's always a, a number of different things that affect our profession, but they're not always immediately evident. I was the, the only person there besides a single community. There must've been 30 people there. That community was considering, should we build a waste treatment facility on their own, right? So they wanted feedback at a very personal level, but the MDW, MWRA had so much more to share. And if you've got that kind of advantage in your uh, community, 
I would say definitely it's something to do. It's something to learn from. It gives you a whole different aspect on what auditing, what risk management is all about. And, and it's people love to talk about what they're doing. It's, it's an amazing story. Well, thank you. Being from the information security realm and cybersecurity over so many years, it's really enlightening to learn more about the auditing process and things like that from when I joined ISACA. So thank you very much for what you do. Um, I hate to end the conversation, but um, we're pretty much out of time. Uh, Cindy, I want to thank you for um, writing the article and joining me today. Um, if any of the listeners are interested in reading the, the full article, uh, Data Do Go to Waste, please click on the link in the description. Um, that's it for me today. Thanks and uh, hope to see everybody again. Signing off, Chris McGowan.